High school football is full of emotion. Wild swings between a piercing pain of defeat and a sweet sensation of victory with euphoric highs and humbling lows. Teams have conditioned. What a play! Been battle tested. Bonds stretched across the gridiron, starting in the steamy summer, and now in the midst of that crisp, familiar feeling of fall, that's taken firm hold under the bright lights. And that's picked off. 256 teams will write a new chapter in their own story of glory, and their legacy begins on the road to Champaign. Eight teams will soon don the crown of champions, forever holding the trophy high in the sky and deep in their hearts. It's time to see where the journey begins now and where it will take them. A voyage full of hope and urgency Touchdown! that stretches all across the land of Lincoln. The stage is set for the next step. The IHSA football playoff pairing show starts now. And good evening and welcome into the 2022 edition of the IHSA football playoff pairing show. I'm Matt Rodewald, Dave Bernhard alongside, and we're not going to wait very long because we haven't waited very long going through these brackets. It's been a long day of football for sure. It, indeed. We just actually got these brackets just a few moments ago, <laughs> and I will tell you, when you take a quick look, a couple of things jump out at me. First of all, some very intriguing second round matchups, so pay attention to that. The other thing, take a look at, and this is applies to 1A through 6A where we have a north bracket and a south bracket. Keep a close eye on where that dividing line has been drawn separating north from south. They are all over the place. Consistency is a mess and the brackets. Let's start the arguing as we go right to class 1A. We're not going to waste any time because you've been waiting all day for them. So we go straight to class 1A, the defending champ, Lena Winslow at 9 and 0. No surprise. They're in as we expected in their spot right at the top seed. They're only lost in the playoffs since 2017 to Forest in 18 and 1 in that stretch. That's how good they've been. They get Richards. Congrats. Your first ever playoff bid. Mid County Co-op and the 8-9 game against Stark County. Pay attention to those 5-4 and four records there in that 8-9 game. Fulton and Aurora Christian, the 4-13 game. And then there's Anna Weathersfield and Rockford Lutheran, who stole a bid last night to get into the postseason. The thing that's amazing about this, you have five 5-4 five teams in this bracket. We have several more 5-4s and fours coming up. Prova, their last playoff win coming in 2006. On to the next page for you to show you the second half of the North Bracket. Hope Academy jumps out at 9-0 with a lot of talent. Their first ever regular season that has been unbeaten. Corliss waits for them in round one. St. B, their best start to the season since 1986. They stumbled a little bit down the stretch. Got a win last night, 7-2. They get forced in out of the gate. Marquette at 8-1, taking on Morrison. And then there's Iroquois West taking on Dakota, the 6-11 game, of course, for Iroquois West. Back-to-back -back appearances for the first time in 20 years. Now, what I'm going to tell you right now is keep an eye on these 9-0 teams in this 1A class because that's going to become important in a couple of weeks. Down to the southern part of Class 1A, and out of the gate, you will see Ridgeview and the Lexington Co-op at 9-0. Madison, the small smallest 11-man football team in the field and one of the last to get in at 5-3. and three. Red Hill and Salt Fork, the 8-9 game there. There's Tuscola, their 26th bid in the last 28 full seasons against Brown County. Route Catholic taking on Villa Grove in the 5-12 game. Okay, so here's your dividing line. Ridgeview Lexington in the south bracket. I don't think we're expecting to see that. Show you the, southern half, the second half of the southern bracket as we go through the rest of it, of course. It's a good one with Camp Point Central at 9-0. Dupo, first bid since 2012. They had to win their final two games on the road just to get into the dance. Cesar Valier at 7-2. Central A&M out of Mo Moequa at 6-3, the 7-10 game there. Greenfield at 8-1 and Calhoun at 5-4. And, and then there's Cumberland at 7-2. Seven, seven straight wins heading into the postseason after starting 0-2. Okay, let me take you through those 9-0 teams. You've got Lena Winslow, Hope Academy in the top. and the bottom, you have Ridgeview Lexington along with Camp Point Central. If you project everything out, if the seeds would fall, you would have an amazing semifinal day. When you talk about the 1A bracket, Lena Winslow obviously comes to mind. It's their tournament to lose at this point. Well, Dean, because they've won it five times in the last 10 years, and they are just rolling along. Now, had a tight game last night against Forreston, but they're averaging over 50 points per game. The Panthers, strong running game. Gage Dunker, Ethan Fry, and then the transfer from eight-man Orangeville. That's Gunnar Labdell, and you've got a team here that is used to winning. You saw Ridgeview Lexington, the co-op semifinals last year. Now, 
calling him a sleeper, and that's only because you have Lena Winslow mm -hmm. here in this same field. So you've got running back Caden Farrell. He's gone for over 3,000 yards the last two years. They started their season in week three with a big win over Tri Valley. They have just come marching down the way. Talked about Hope Academy, intriguing team here, independent team. Now, the Eagles have played teams with schools enrollment of 163 to 2,000. But they did have a win over Ottawa Marquette, 500 yards of offense in that game. And Tom Jost, the head coach for Ottawa Marquette, said this is the fastest team we've ever played in my time at Marquette. Ideally, because they play an independent schedule, they are ready for to go to any environment, which is interesting for a city team going up and down the state. And, of course, the Hope Academy with a lot of 5A talent, according to those critics out there. Well, so, Hope Academy put 61 points on the board last night against Woodstock. Woodstock North, for sure. Okay, on to Class 2A. On to the next bracket, the defending champs, Wilmington. We'll see them at some point, although they've kind of faded a little bit in terms of the conversation lately. Will they get back up there? Look at that top seed, Maroa Forsyth, the 9-0 game. You talked about those lines. We're going to get to it for sure. Their 17th straight playoff appearance in the IHSA. The 8-9 game. Look at a couple of 7-2 teams of Farmington and EPG. Rockridge at 8-1, taking on Newman Central Catholic out of Sterling. 29 playoff appearances in the stretch of 31 consecutive winning seasons for them. Mercer County, the five seed there, taking on Bloomington Central Catholic out of the gate. Okay, so I am a little uh, off balance here seeing the role of Forsyth in the north part of this bracket. But I'm also keeping an eye on Rockridge and Central Catholic. That was a game that Rockridge won easily in week two. To the second half of the north bracket and uh, the seeds that jump out, of course Wilmington does, but Bismarck Henning, BHRA right there at 9-0. And then Knoxville and Menden Unity, there it's the 7-10 game. Wilmington, 8-1 on the year. And, of course, 3,000 yards rushing. That rushing attack will be tough to stop. Tri-Valley and Clifton Central, the Comets getting in at 6-3, having to go on the road. Wilmington, your defending Class 2A state champion. They have a nice path here to advance to several weeks into these playoffs. To the south we go. So where does that line take you? Because that means there's a lot of teams there. And St. Teresa, 9-0. Chester at 5-4. That's the 116 matchup out of there, out of the, right in the first round. Athens and White County, the 8-9 game. How about Pena? 9-3 in the first round since 2008. They will play host to Auburn out of the gate. And North Mac and Fairfield, that's the 5-12 matchup in the southern part of the bracket. I'm going to take you up to that second game there, White County and Athens. How about that? We showed you in 1A a couple of 5-4 and four teams playing in the first round. Here you have a pair of 7-2s. and twos. I really like Athens. To the final part of the Class 2A bracket for 2022, it is uh, Johnston City at 9-0, and the two seed with Flora. Vandalia will have to take on Arthur Lovington, Atwood Hammond, and, of course, quarterback and safety two-way star Caden Feagan, who's heading to Illinois. Shelbyville three seed and for Shelbyville it's their best regular season since 2003 you get Altoff and Redbud and Nashville the back-to-back -back state runners up have to go on the road to try and get their way back to Champaign. I want to go back to Shelbyville for a second their only loss coming to St. Teresa and then Johnston City how about Johnson City just going about their business, winning and winning and winning? So what jumps out, obviously, uh, there's some good teams, some good 9-0 teams. The defending state champ will have a tough road to get down there, but St. Teresa is a very interesting team to watch. Oh, my goodness. St. Teresa now disappointing for them because they're looking to get to the championship game for the first time since 2016, and that's despite winning 44 games in the last four years. So you've got a team here that scores almost 50 points per game. They've all scored. This is impressive to me. They're Central Illinois Conference rivals Tuscola, Shelbyville, and Central by a 127 to 28 margin. If I'm looking for a sleeper team in this bracket, I'm going to look to the West. I really like the Rock Ridge Rockets. And I'll tell you why. Their only loss of the season came in week one to Princeton. We'll talk about Princeton when we get to class 3A. But Rockridge, all they do is win. They don't dominate teams, but you get on the field with them, and somehow Rockridge comes out on top. You mentioned Pena earlier, Matt. How about the quarterback for Pena? Our featured player here in 2A is Max Lynch, dual threat. This guy is total offense personified. He had averaged 330 yards of offense per game and equally divided among the run and pass. In week eight against North Mac, 455 yards of total offense. 1,700 rushing yards, 22 rushing touchdowns. How about 2,700 total yards? So it's really balanced. You weren't kidding about that with 31 touchdowns. He's awfully good. 
Don't go anywhere. The IHSA football playoff pairing show will continue as we head in towards Class 3A and 4A. Stillman Valley, the Cardinals. Will the big Northern Conference have a serious level of representation here in the tournament? And Class 4A with Joliet Central or Joliet Catholic. We have not talked about Joliet Catholic at Amazing. all. It feels like all year long. Stay with us. All right, two brackets in the book as we continue on with the 2022 IHSA playoff pairing show. Matt and Dave with you here as we, we are rolling through some good ones. And honestly, we, we just looked at them, so we're going to show them with you basically for the first time. We've gone through two classes. How about Class 3A? On we go with Byron, the defending state champ. Another team kind of laying in the weeds there. We'll get to them for sure. They're back. But how about Princeton? 9-0. and They'll be the top seed in this one. Princeton, since 2019, their seniors have gone 36-4. and it's been awesome for the Princeton Tigers this year. Piatone is who they face right out of the gate. Their last playoff win coming in 2017. Genoa Kingston coming off a very impressive win last night. And Genoa Kingston has been 7-2 and two at least in each of those last six full seasons. And they had only done that six times since the 80s prior to that. They get EPG out of the gate. I see Catholic and King, the 4-13 game. And there's Stillman Valley lurking with a rematch possibility right there. 8-1 and with Monmouth right there, the 12th seed. I think this top part of this bracket is absolutely brutal. You have second round games here that would be absolutely stunning, worthy of semifinal games. Stillman Valley hasn't been to the quarterfinals since 2013. On we go to the second half of the northern bracket. Reed Custer has been a story all year long. Their first unbeaten season in school history. They will take on Carver. Dupec, Duran, Pecatonica, the co-op there at 7-2. They put together a very nice season. But Seneca, also a great story, looking for their first playoff win since 2013. They've had their first undefeated season since 2000. Winnebago awaits for them. And they're the defending champs, the Byron Tigers at 8-1, with Lyle sneaking into the field at 5-4 with a win last night. You know, I said the top half of this north bracket was brutal. I'm wrong. This one is yeah. brutal. You've got second round games. It could be Reed Custer, Dupec, Seneca, and these, you said, the defending state champ. On to the southern half of the 3A bracket. The top seed there, of course, Fairbury, Prairie Central, 9-0. and And for Prairie Central, it's their first conference title since 2006. They reached the semifinals there that year. They get a short trip over to Paxton Buckley, Loda at 5-4. and four. Rather, they come the other way. Hillsboro at 6-3. and three. Roxana at 6-3. and three. That's your 8-9 game right there. Unity at 8-1. and one. They have an interesting road, but they have motivation being 10 minutes away from the University of Illinois. Harrisburg has the long drive up for the 4-13 game there. And then Mount Carmel at 8-1, taking on Monticello, the 5-12 match up there. I really love Fairbury Prairie Central. They have a pounding running game and it works well in any kind of weather. And you mentioned Mount Carmel, that team is angry. They had their undefeated season ended last night by Mount Vernon. Monticello, 13 straight appearances in the postseason. Now to the second half of the Southern Bracket with Benton and Olympia. The 215 battle there, St. Joseph Ogden. You know Ty Pence is good at basketball. He decided in August to play football, and that's been a big difference. They're 6-3, and three, and they'll have a home game in the postseason. Williamsville, another team that's sort of drifted off into forgotten land for some of us critics out there. 13th, place, 13th straight playoff bid. They've only lost nine regular seasons in nine regular season games in 13 years. Carlinville's their matchup. Eureka and Beardstown, the 6-11 uh, matchup. You mentioned Williamsville. Okay, you lose one game, and as you said, everybody kind of disappears. That one game was a one-point loss to Maroa Forsyth, and you say to yourself, that's a Sangamo Conference game. You lost to your rival. Big time Williamsville team. So that is your 2022 Class 3A bracket. And Reed Custer's been a fascinating story because there are a lot of people that haven't seen anything like Reed Custer this year. Well, you better catch them quick because Reed Custer has had a running clock in every one of their nine games. They have scored almost 60 points per game. They've outscored their opponents 534 to 53. Now, last year was the best season in Reed Custer history at 10 and 2. Both losses coming to eventual state champs in Wilmington and Byron, and most of those guys are back. We talk about stories. How about this story? Seneca, 9 and 0, the only undefeated team in this year's entire field that did not make the playoffs last year. Only two winning seasons since 2001. And guess what? Seneca has not allowed a point since. September 10th. One of the outstanding quarterbacks in the state. We've got a bunch of them here, but this one hails from Princeton. Tegan Davis, what a 
athlete, a dynamic athlete, according to Newman head coach Mike LeMay. This guy, all-stater in football, basketball, track. He was a state high jump champion in week eight on his 18th birthday. Four touchdowns passing, a rushing touchdown, an interception. What a birthday gift for Tegan Davis. It makes a difference when your quarterback sneak on the goal line doesn't have to be a sneak. Just jump over the yep. line, just Walter Payton <laughs> style. How about Class 4A now? Joliet Catholic, your state champion a year ago, back in this field once again, seeking their 16th title. But the top seed in the north is Richmond Burton. We know how good the Rockets are. 41 wins in their last 42 games and three straight trips to the IHSA semifinals. You get the Rebels of Ridgewood right out of the gate. Bronzeville and Sullivan, the pair of 6-3 and three matchups in the first round. Wheaton Academy is very intriguing. They've had a great season, but their reward is Providence Catholic. There will be a lot of people at that one get there early. Juliet Catholic and Phillips. Some pedigree with both of those programs as well. I mentioned at the top of the show, you look to, towards second round matchups. Yeah, the first round matchup, Wheaton Academy and Providence Catholic. How about a potential second round matchup, a rematch of earlier in the season, Providence Catholic and Juliet Catholic. That was a high scoring type ball game. It's the first time Providence has been in class 4A since 1997. That's when they had the six class system back then. Now to the second half of the Southern bracket, Hyde Park will play host to Johnsburg. Of course, Johnsburg had a one and three start, had to work their way back into the field. Rochelle and Dixon, that will be a fascinating Western Northwestern Illinois matchup with a 7-2 and two and 6-3 and three battle there. St. Francis also on the same level as Wheaton Academy. They'll play host to Marengo and Evergreen Park quietly motoring along at 7-2. and two. A friendly path quite possibly at least to get through the second round. Comer of Noble Charter right there 6 and 11. 24 hours ago St. Francis suffered its first loss this season at the hands of IC Catholic and I really feel like this bracket sets up nice for St. Francis. Moving on now to the second half of the southern look of this bracket. Geneseo back in the postseason for the first time since 2017. It's weird to say and they might be the dangerous 16 seed for sure. You get Carterville 9-0 on the road out of the gate but again this is the southern half. Look where Geneseo gets sent. Cole City also in the southern half. They'll be at home but Alton, East Alton's got a long drive up there. A pair of six and three games the teams right there. Rochester and Effingham. That's the 4-13 matchup, and Breeze Central playing host to Mount Zion. You talk about teams that maybe you've lost sight of a little bit. Well, you see Rochester, the only loss coming in week number one to Sacred Heart Griffin, so the Rockets are going to be there again. Effingham with three shutouts this season. Cole City with their uh, 11th straight trip to the postseason. SHG, Sacred Heart Griffin. We wondered where they would be. We did not see them in 3A, so you knew they'd be in 4A, and so they'll get Hall, who had to work their way into the field, at five and four. Richland County at seven and two. Waterloo at six and three, the seven ten matchup. Let's hear it for Macomb. Their last home playoff game has been since 2012. They finish off their first undefeated regular season since 1989. And your reward is Quincy Notre Dame coming right down the road, so to speak. Murfreesboro at seven and two will face Columbia at six and three on the other side of that bracket. A nine and zero record for the Macomb Bombers. First time they've gone to regular season undefeated since 1989. They score points, 43 a game for the Bombers. All right, and in Class 4A, the Illinois State University's team to watch is the Sacred Heart Griffin Cyclones. Create your own legacy at Illinois State University. It's a swan song, so to speak. It's, it's interesting to watch SHG this year. Ken Leonard retiring as the winningest coach of all time in Illinois. Currently 413 wins. He returns nearly every skill player back from the 4A runner-up. Here come some names. Ty Locke, Keyshawn Singleton, Jake Hamilton, Maddox Morris, Kyle Long, Bill Sanders, Richard Jackson, Corey West. The rest of the 4A field does not want to hear those names. You mentioned Wheaton Academy. Uh, I mean, kind of a sleeper team here in Wheaton Academy. Get the forgotten Wheaton team, even though they hail from West Chicago. Only loss I mentioned coming to IC Catholic. They like to throw it. 2,000 yards passing on the ground, 1,000 yards for the Warriors from Wheaton Academy. Another favorite team to watch. And you've been watching them a lot. They made the semis last year. Richmond Burton under head coach Mike Knoll. Impressive wins this year at home against Normal West and Morris. A pounding running game led by running back Steven Siegel. This is a team that has won 41 of its last 42 games. And what they did to Morris as Morris was ranked number one at the state mm -hmm. at the time is something you don't see very often. Of course, Steven Siegel more than 20 yards, uh, 20 touchdowns on the ground this year. They have a potent running attack. Should be fun to watch and still more teams to reveal here on the IHSA playoff pairing show. Hey, we're halfway done. We got 5A and 6A to come here, and we have more teams to show you. And East St. Louis is also sitting there. What's their bracket going to look like? We got 5A and 6A coming up.
Welcome back to the football playoff pairing show for the IHSA for 2022. Matt, Dave, as we continue to roll along halfway through and we're getting to the bigger classes and there's a lot of people still wanting to see where these class lines sort of fall. So let's get to it, shall we? Class 5A we go and to see how things shake out with Fenwick, the defending state champ. There's Sycamore, 9-0 for the Spartans. They are 10-1 in the first round since 2008. Their one loss was to the eventual state champs. Nazareth back in 2015. So this is the first time they've ever, of course, uh, gotten to 9-0. I shouldn't say first time ever. First time in a while, for sure. This is their best stretch of football for Joe Ryan and company since the 50s and the 60s. Bulls prep taking on Carmel. The Corsairs back in the field for the first time since 2016. They haven't won a game since 2013 in the postseason. Good chance for them to do that there. Good STEM Academy at 8-1. They'll get a home game as their first appearance in the postseason, taking on uh, Noble Charter Pritzker and Sterling, the Warriors, their 21st consecutive winning season, 19 playoff appearances in that stretch. They will take on Vider and the Lions. When the top seed goes 9-0, they've earned their spot, but I really feel like Sycamore has done that this year, and their reward, I think, is a nice path onto the semis. Very friendly path, at least to get to the quarterfinals for sure, with Sterling kind of waiting there, an old conference mate of theirs. On to the second half of the northern bracket. Morgan Park and Fenwick, the defending champs, will go on the road to the south side to take on Morgan Park out of the gate. Peyton Prep and Spear. So you got a couple of uh, Chicago teams right there in the 7-10 matchup. Boylan Catholic, the Boylan Titans, awfully good, 8-1 and, ten, uh, eight and one this year, of course. Uh, perennial team, but they're 6-3 and three as they drop back down towards 5A, not in the 7As that we've normally seen. So Hillcrest in, is the 5-4 and four team that will head out to Rockford to face off against the Titans. And then Glenbard South, a good season in the Upstate 8, but the worst reward you could get is a Nazareth team that is seasoned and tested and looked really good last night. Boy, they are really peaking when they have to. Now, we'll talk more about it later. But if Boylan wins and if Nazareth wins, Boylan would have to come to Nazareth Academy. Let's head south, shall we, and show you the second half of the uh, 5A bracket for 2022. Muhammad Seymour is a story there, considering the state champs. Uh, state championships are right down the street at 9-0. Uh, Muhammad Seymour with back-to-back -back quarterfinal trips. They'd love to see that since 2004, 2005, 18 starters returning for them. They get the Pirates of Ottawa in their first dance in quite some time since 2012. Metamora and Jacksonville, a pair of six and three teams in the 8-9 matchup. You've got Morris, who is ranked number one throughout much of the season at 7-2. They get a rematch with LP. The Cavaliers will have to go this time to face off against Morris uh, down Route 47. Uh, triad at 7-2, taking on Centralia. And that is your 5-12 matchup in the South. I want to go back up to Ottawa. Do you know last night in their game that they had to win to get into the playoffs, their fans were wearing sweatshirts that said 2012 playoffs. Special, special year for the Pirates. You, you hold on to that when you had two or fewer wins in the last seven seasons. They are appreciating their 5-4 and four season for sure. Highland is the 8-1 and one team. That's the two seed taking on Dunlop. So Dunlop has a bit of a drive to start their postseason. Mascuda and Marion, the 6-3 and three matchup. In the 7-10 matchup, for sure, the Peoria 8-1 squad will be at home against MacArthur. And Kankakee got to the state championship last year at 7-2. Face off against a very strange Mer Mount Vernon team. Has had a strange journey to the 11 seed. They're 5-4 by record, but it's a tough matchup for Kankakee. You know, I look at this part of the bracket, and I just see several teams that can advance. I think this is the toughest of those four different sets of brackets in Class 5. 5A, a very intriguing bracket. Some uh, kudos to Dunlop also starting 1-3 to get to the postseason. And for Class 5A, the Menards player to watch is Malachi Washington. Save big money on all your home improvement needs. Dave, what makes Malachi so special? Oh, well, watch right here. He can make some moves. He'll run through you. He's rushed for about 2,000 yards, almost 30 touchdowns on the season. He had 200 yards on 37 carries in the rain in a loss to Normal West. Huge offensive lineup for him, but this guy is a great high school runner. You mentioned Muhammad Seymour a little bit earlier and how they are close champagne. Here's a team to watch. They returned eight starters from both sides of any ball from an 11-1 team. They just powered their way through a season, an average margin of victory of 35 points. Quarterback Wyatt Bohm, an all-stater, he is back. And by the way, I'm a big fan of the Muhammad Seymour band. <laughs> <laughs> Down near the St. Louis area, sleeper team for me here. The Highland Bulldogs, now they caught my eye with a 54-7 win over Washington in week one. The only loss suffered by the Bulldogs, just a three-point loss to 8A Edwardsville. Other than that game, their average margin of victory, 42 points per game, thanks to a well-balanced offense. 
And we talked about Mount Vernon. What a season for Mount Vernon. They had four 0-9 seasons since 2017. In fact, each of the last two full seasons 0-9, they had to forfeit a couple of games, but a big win last night, 34-33 over unbeaten Mount Carmel. Congratulations to the Rams making their way into this field. It's worth noting, had they lost that game, they still would have been in the field because yep. they own their conference tiebreaker. It was a non-conference matchup, so, but we do have one 4-5 and five team in the field. We'll show you who that is coming up as we move on. As we go to Class 6A in a moment, we'll see where the the folks from Crete Moni end up as well in a very stacked Class 7A bracket. There's a lot of teams that are going to be in a really interesting second round matchup. The Road to Champagne with the Playoff Pairing Show continues next.